Dungeon Runners Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Dungeon Runners Podcast. I'm Matt, and today we have Mr. Creepy Poopy. Hello. And Blue. Hello. I only just knew I had to show up an hour ago, so <laughs> I'm here to ruin everything. <laughs> Welcome to the last minute preparation podcast where we knew what we were doing. I was like going to say, don't act ago. like that's not every week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the thing? This is usually my bedtime, like big time. This is not usually, I've been... this is a very recent change for you, man. Yeah. Okay, no, I've gone from sleeping American time zone times to sleeping actual English time zone times. It's 2.50 a.m. right now for me. And even this is around about when I go to sleep and that's normal. Try wake up for nine. I'm stupid. I don't sleep. To be fair, it's probably about the time you stuck in back into American time anyway. Yeah, you, you have like less than two weeks. <laughs> yeah. We're doing you a favor. <sighs> Welcome to the yeah. Correcting Matt's Sleeping Pattern podcast. Well, no, that that's the, that's the, the, the thing though. The flights is like, it's not like I'll be flying American, ta- American times. So if I sleep slept American times right now, I'd still have to wake up like eight in the morning or six in the morning to fly. So I'd be waking up when I'd be still awake if I was in America. It made okay. It doesn't make sense. It makes no, it sense. No, because you could just stay up all night and then fall asleep the whole way though. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like if you were if you don't switch over to American times while you're here, it's just gonna suck for you. Mm-hmm. Dude, my flipping of sleep pattern skills is through the roof. I'm like I'm OP at it. For those of you who don't know, during San Japan, uh, Matt is going to be here to uh, enjoy life and uh, be a weeb. Yep. Make sure you beat him up for me. I'm going to. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to call him a weeb, and then I'm going to beat him to death with my own waifu. Tell me smells. <laughs> so I, I've got this thing of like booking everything or sorting everything last minute because like I never know what I'm doing at any specific time. So I'm like, well, I don't want to book flights because I don't know exactly when I'd need to go there, get there, be there or where I'm going to stay and stuff. So I'll sort it last minute when, you know, things need to be done. You're awful. You're the worst guest yes, ever, seriously? man. I would hate that shit. No, well, I this- usually do it when I do my flights because I usually book my flights three to four weeks before the flights because apparently that's the best time to get the prices. So you were lucky I don't work like a real job because otherwise like there was no way I could ever accommodate that kind of planning. Seriously. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair too, I just didn't know what I was doing. Like I was 90% sure I wanted to go. Well, I was 100% sure I wanted to go, but I wasn't 90% sure I could actually go. But then I was like, yeah, I can do it. So oh, my life's a roller coaster. I was gonna say, it so was... you are coming, right? Or is this gonna change last minute again? No, no. Yeah. Now it's hundred percent I'm coming. But before it was like ninety percent. I was like, I don't wanna plan things just to find out I can't do it. So I need to make sure. But it's hard to make sure until like like a month before. I was like, Oh yeah, cool, I've definitely got that time off. Even then I booked it around Insomnia. Insomnia? What? Yeah, you know that um the massive convention in England, in Birmingham. No. That we went to last time. Mm-hmm. We're stuck oh. into the Twitch parties. Oh right. The one where you stole we my went to identity. The casino. <laughs> oh god. It's like, yeah, I wanna go to this Twitch VIP party. Oh what's your Twitch? Mr. Creepy Pasta. Yeah, you're terrible. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Mr. Creepy Pasta. We I haven't streamed in like three months but don't worry about it i'm still good to be here (laughs) i'm still good i'm still partnered so i can get in i didn't even know it worked that way okay i would have been going over to twitch parties and i'm over here at south by southwest i I just assume like now they need to have important people there yeah it's just partnered people it's terrible I hate but it. No, like, oh gosh, I totally. Um, so the, it's like the weekend before I go. You know, I'm leaving on the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. That Friday, no, that Saturday, Sunday, and Monday is when Insomnia is on. So oh, I'm probably going to miss the Monday. And on Tuesday, like the, the brink of dawn at six in the morning, I'm going to fly across and then have a day to recuperate. And then it's traveling to San Antonio for San Japan. Yeah. You're going to die. I'm going to live. I was going to say, Indeed. honestly, the, the trip from uh, from Dallas to San Antonio is not that bad. How long is it? Oh, you know, like five hours. Oh, only. Okay. When you live in Texas, five hours really ain't that bad. <laughs> five hours here is from Ontario to Quebec. That that far? That's a long way, man. <laughs> that has meant nothing to me. 
<laughs> I, I don't like here. Here's my thing: is like five hours is you, you have to understand a certain thing. Whenever you live in in um, in Texas, is like if we wanted to go off to like like me and Megan want to go off to that sushi place that we go to uh, where where they have the uh, the conveyor belt sushi. If we want to go over to that conveyor belt sushi place, it takes us uh, about an hour and a half to get there. So it's like going five hours. Yeah, that's nothing. That's just so much time wasted. Dude, welcome to Texas. We're the masters of wasting time. Yeah, apparently. I'd, I'd struggle to drive for five hours in England just because I'd probably hit the beach at like fourth hour. Mm. I don't think I've driven for five hours. I, I don't think I've ever had to. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think, is there even five hours to drive where you are? That's what I'm saying. There's nowhere <laughs> that I could get. Probably s the north end of Scotland. Oh my even god! Then, like when you're saying that, um, you're, you're talking about going like into an entirely different country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. We're connected to Scotland. I mean, yeah, okay. I'm also connected to Mexico, but that's a completely different country. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we got if, Wales I think if we too. drove for like if we drove for ten hours, we would hit Mexico. I think it's three and a half hours to go to Wales, like North Wales, uh, where I went camping in Shell Island. For a second, I thought you meant actual whales. Yeah, you were yeah. Just saying, yeah we got whales. <laughs> we don't have sea life. Is <laughs> Wales technically another country? I mean, come on. Wales is basically just England, isn't it? They got their own language. Ooh. They got like the world's longest name for a town. Yeah, I mean, come on. Anybody could make that up. There's some guy, there's a weather reporter that has to pronounce it. <laughs> that guy's job. So it's yeah, insane. seriously. I was like, they literally made that town just to fuck with that guy, didn't they? <laughs> Um, speaking of town, if there was, so, uh, if, yeah, if there was a zombie apocalypse right now, so there's a big zombie plague, you know, patient X has just spread it around everywhere, the germs are flying everywhere, people are biting, biting each other, but it's like, um, I want to say it's not fully fledged, like, the whole total apocalypse, it's still spreading, where would you go, like, where would you hold up? Reckon. What do you mean, like a like an actual physical location? You talk about like going like can I say like mall? Is that like an acceptable answer? <laughs> I'd say Walmart. Yeah, that's really? what I'm thinking too. Like a, a like a some kind of store or, or a place where you know there would be a good amount of resources to be able to pilfer. You yeah, know where Walmart there's going to be uh, lots of people there doing yeah, the but, same thing. But Walmart has hunting supplies and food and guns. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, everyone's yeah, doing the same thing. Well, like, Dawn of the Dead, like, um, what was it the 2007 movie uh, for Dawn of the Dead, the, the remake they did? They, that's where mm -hmm. they kind of basically said that going to the mall was still the best idea, even though there were other people there. Because other people at that point, like, crisis drives people insane, but also brings them together kind of thing. Also, you really question that, because in, in the reality of the situation, I'd be dead right away. Wait, why? You'd be the action uh, hero. You wouldn't be the, the guy who gets killed right away. No way. I'd rather be the guy who got killed right away. Why? All the apocalypses suck after, like, the first few months. No, uh, okay, then explain The Walking Dead. Uh, it got Dude. stupid. It got, it got, <laughs> that, that sucked after season one. They got rich. That doesn't what? mean it's quality or a world you would want to live in for more than a week. I guess that's fair. I don't, I, I don't know. There's certain aspects of like the zombie apocalypse that seems neat. Maybe not like a zombie apocalypse, but that like whole apocalyptic uh, scenario that seems still kind of neat when you're like the, the action hero of that. Like the, what was that one movie with Snake Plissken? Uh, uh, escape escape from, from New York. York. Yeah, that kind of escape from New York. As long as you're the hero in it, it seems cool. <clears throat> yeah, but... Look at yourself honestly, would you be the hero, or would you be just be a jobber out there who's going to die and make some dumb mistake? I mean, yeah, I'd make a dumb mistake, but there's also, you know, the unlikely hero. Mm. You mean like the one from, um, Zombieland? Yeah! Like, Sha he's Sha just nerdy, Shaun of the Dead. but he's so... Oh yeah, Shaun of the Dead, where they're like average schmucks, but they survive. Exactly! To be fair, Shaun of the Dead isn't the best, like, survival story out there, you know, they're pretty much... What? Is he, he lives! He basically messes up. No, he messes up. Time after time. Well, I mean, like, because he's human. Yeah. That's why it's a good film. Blue, where would you go? Are you seeing me? Mm? Or do you want to blue? blue. Blue, yeah. Blue. I, I said Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Man. Wait, oh, crap. You said Walmart? You have Walmart in Canada. Yeah. Oh, Walmart's right really? beside the hunting supply store. Wait, the so you hell? have double the hunting supplies? Yes. <laughs> that's kinda, Dude. That's kind of nice. So it's like See, if like, anywhere goes down, it would not be that place unless people are really stupid. See, the thing I'd like to do is if I manage to get supplies back to my house, I'd just go in the loft or the attic for oh you God. Americans and then just destroy the staircase slash just remove the ladders. 
<laughs> and then you starve to death. No, no, get supplies, get loads of like tin food and loads of bottled water. But how would you, like, if you destroyed the ladder, then you wouldn't be able to go down to resupply. Yeah, so eventually you run in there, and where are you going to shit? Ah, yeah. Just stick your ass out of the window and then shit on the floor. <laughs> yeah. That's <Dude>. what. <laughs> I, yeah. I'd imagine the smell would eventually draw them to you. Also, it would give them something to climb eventually. <laughs> <laughs> See, we used to throw our poop out the windows in the Victorian days. Yeah, that's how people got the plague. Yeah, was, was that really? I'll get the plague. the plague. I'll kill. I'll kill the, the zombie virus with my own virus. <laughs> Oh my god, I actually would love to see like an actual story of what you're talking about because that sounds like pure insanity. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm exp experimenting with ways to kill zombies <laughs> using my own feces. So far it just involves throwing it at them. Is this is the second podcast where I've talked about throwing my own poop. <laughs> I, I just imagine this is what you want to do with your life. Just pretty just much at this point. A dream of yours. You want to be able to He's throw your own poop. for an excuse. <laughs> it's just a fantasy, okay? You guys, you guys figured me out, okay? All I just want, all I want to do is throw poop at things. Also, can I just say that you're so unimaginative that where you want to go during a zombie apocalypse is home. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, though. I don't want to go somewhere public, because guess what? That's how people get infected and die. I mean, yeah, yeah, but at the same point, like, you know, you don't want to see another human being that would drive you crazy. Okay, okay. Think about it, though. If you if you go into Walmart, so you go into the place that stocks all the food, that has everything, that everyone's going to think of going, it's going to be like going there on Black Friday, except for one or two of those people are going to be the bad guys, the zombies. <laughs> Yeah, but you're also forgetting all the cops would go there too, because that would be the most likely place for people to show up and can, uh, like, oh, team up. That's actually really clever. I'd say the cops might stay in the, um, the police station. I wouldn't think so, because they would have to be out. Like, I mean, yeah, yes. if you're talking about self-preservation, then definitely, like, the police officers would be in the police station for that. But, like... Yeah, they'd, hard, at, there's a, they'd resupply at the Walmart, but they'd hold up in their own precinct. No, 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 because so. they would have to be out first off to, to try to keep order. And, I mean, like, you may get, like, one or two that would return out of cowardice, but you're talking about, like, their actual job is to hold order. They would be, first off, trying to, uh, trying to help people from there, uh, you know, like, mm -hmm. out in the public, like, and then maybe one or two people would be returning back because, oh, I'm not going to deal with this. I ain't about to die. And then, you know, yeah, but, going with their, you know, okay. their guns. Remember that? You remember any, any like video recording of Black Friday, you know, when they all rush through the doors at the same time? Mm -hmm. Imagine trying to pick out the one zombie out of all them. I know. Oh, like, I watched 28 weeks a, later. I know. Yeah, it, it'll be so hard to distinguish. And the cop's just going to like point a gun and be like, hmm, one of these guys is trying to kill the other one. The other one's just trying to get the last TV <laughs> and kill the other one. Uh, I live in Canada. It's a different climate here. Oh, it's going to be cold, isn't it? They're going to slide yeah. the zombies down, aren't they? I Along think with that, and people tend to be a little more level-headed and actually make lines for shit. I've Does never it? seen people, like, I was going to say, do you, you still have Black Friday there, don't, don't you, Blue? It, yeah, but it's just people in lines. Very big lines. Oh, that's <laughs> lame. Yeah. That's not even fun. <laughs> no. It's not fun it's unless someone dies. I was going to say, has anyone died in Canada from Black Friday? I don't think so, because it only just started becoming a thing here a few years ago. I was saying, it was the same Dude, thing in England. same here. Yeah. See, you uh, guys are, in like, England. It cleverly frugal with your money as well. You're not as, like, uh, insanely irresponsible as, as most Americans are. No, Who, the reality of the situation is our deals are not as good as yours, so there isn't reason to go crazy. Oh, come on. Uh, the deals that happen in Black Friday, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you and everybody else who's listens to the podcast, is not that great. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> You can now get a three hundred dollar television for for like two fifty. Woohoo! Amazing. I'm gonna kill somebody. Like that. That yeah. doesn't. That does not make sense to me, man. Yeah, it's just like in the end, you could order stuff online for far cheaper these it, days. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, especially considering Cyber Monday comes right after Black Friday. I yeah. I, so okay, it, it between you guys, like it, honesty between us, who here actually does go out to shop in a store? Like that, you prefer to do that instead of buying things online. I assume Matt is the only one who could possibly answer this correctly because I know me, I don't, I, I know was, the blue doesn't. <laughs> right. I would say that I don't, except for if it's, if it's like an independent shop. So if I'm going to get like Magic the Gathering cards, I know that it's just going to be some local, like literally the closest place to me that sells Magic cards or any sort of nerd stuff like that is Litchfield. So I have to drive out, but I want to support this guy because it's some old guy that just like um, hosts all these game nights for kids and stuff. And he's really cool and he gave me loads of 
cool cards because like I showed interest and no, I was I, really I friendly. Get I get that. Um, so supporting the local nerd shop because we don't have much conglomerate ones. And um, only just recently, just for tools, because I've had such a pain in the ass, like trying to work and I, I'm like, oh, I need a wire stripper. I need to get it. I could get it cheaper online. And I wish I just got it from the shops because it would have I meant I could have worked that day. Mm -hmm. So only for work and to support that one old dude. <laughs> Other than that, it, everything's online. If I can cheap out, I'll cheap out. No, I mean, I just don't want the human interaction, honestly. That's where I'm at is I just don't want to have to talk to people. You guys have like, like... I was going to say, my thing's like, I always imagine it's more expensive to run a shop in real life, you know, paying rent and uh, loads of bills and taxes and insurances on the building. Whereas it's cheaper for some guys to have like a space in the Amazon warehouse. Like the, the way they do Prime is like you stock the Amazon warehouse and they have their own workers that distribute it for you. So you just like, oh, I want a hundred iPhone cases sent to this warehouse and they do everything for you. So I imagine that's cheaper. So you are going to get a cheaper price than the people at the shops who don't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yo, do you guys have the robot checkouts yet? Wait, what? Yeah. You just have like a computer do all the checkout and you do the checkout in yourself and you don't have oh, to deal with people. Scan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we have that over at uh, like Walmart's incorporated that like quite a while ago. But it's it's yeah. wonderful. You don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. Apart from that one old dude is like, dude, did not recognize that thing and it's just like swearing at it because he can't understand how to do it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the easiest thing in the world. But yeah, a lot of old people don't want to use it so the lines are usually shorter too. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it wonderful. Unless, like, unless you have like a Walmart like the one that we have where it's all of the um, employee check lines, they're all closed mm -hmm. and the only thing left is self-checkout. Wow. I haven't heard of that. Haven't well, I mean, like, I, I live life That's pretty like late at night. in the morning, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. live life pretty late at night so it's like two o'clock in the morning, I just want to go over here i just want to get like you know a bag of chips and then get home and i go over there with my bag of chips and like there's a line of like 18 people trying to go to the self-checkout because everybody's holding it up and they're trying to buy their groceries at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> At least the robot won't buy you. It won't judge you for buying chips at 2 a.m. Look, nobody should judge me for buying chips at 2 a.m., okay? I live my life I want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got um, these self-checkout things now. So we've got, like, these the small ones that you typically see. So there's, like, 10 of these machines. And next to it, there's these conveyor belt ones for 20-plus items or 10-plus items, I think. So if you're there with a shopping trolley or shopping cart or whatever, you can put it all in the conveyor belt. And it does it like the normal conveyor belt thing. And you get to go, Dit! and then it moves across you go Dit. oh yeah yeah <laughs> why is that fun <laughs> dude it's so fun when i was a little kid all i wanted to do was be a checkout um you know like the supermarket person who goes because it looks super fun <laughs> And having these self checkouts has helped me like fulfill a dream without having to endure being like working at a supermarket. Wait, have you Jesus. not? No, I actually got a question for you, Matt. What what was yeah? what is your job history like? Like, what did you not what did much. you do before you before you did which, before becoming an, an audio engineer? Before becoming a whore, I was. <laughs> um, so I did uh, I did education without doing a job. Uh, I, I had a paper route when I was. 12 or something um and then at school in sixth form which is where some people go to college we do sixth form some you can choose between sixth form or college and then go to uni um we had this thing called ema which stopped as soon as i finished but basically you get 30 quid a week uh depending on your ta parents's tax bracket sort of thing so like if you if you had like a fairly low income uh household you get 30 pounds a week and i managed I was one of the kids that was actually saved my money. So I had like money after that. And then I did uni, which had student loans. So I never really needed a job until after uni. And then it was just working at the gym, which was about 60 seconds from my door. Then working at Blockbuster, which is about 65 seconds from my door. <laughs> then I did YouTube stuff slash my own stuff. So like com composing and doing odd bits here and there. Um, and then I worked for TT Games for two months, contracting. So working on Lego Batman 3. And then it's pretty much been YouTube since then. 
It's, it's okay. No, because when you were saying like you didn't, you never did a, uh, a like supermarket, you didn't, you didn't have to work in a supermarket. I was wondering like what kind of, you know, what, what was the job history before before doing YouTube? Because I knew that you worked as an audio engineer and you did all this stuff for uh, like Lego Batman and things like that. But I was always wondering like, what did you do besides that? I forgot. I knew you that you Oh, it was like the normal people jobs. Yeah. What is the? No, mm-hmm. I like, always call them normal people jobs because I just might go with what my mom says. It's just a real job. <laughs> real job. <laughs> that too. Oh. It's what my One of them demeans you other person what happened to means yourself <laughs> i'd prefer to one... mean myself okay <laughs> <laughs> but no i knew you worked at blockbuster but i was like i was wondering like did you not work at a supermarket before because i've i've done um i've worked at a supermarket but i've never like enjoyed, how was it i enjoyed working at at&t far more than working at the supermarket <laughs> wow i also worked at mcdonald's okay so it could have been worse mm-hmm I mean, is McDonald's... I hear, right, okay, 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 okay. So I worked for Blockbusters. The moment I stepped in, I earned the same amount as people who worked there for 13 years. Yeah. It's all minimum wage except for... I don't even think the assistant manager... I think the assistant manager got like a little bump over minimum wage. And the manager got a little bit more. But this manager that we had got rose up the ranks pretty quick. So he had a pretty, it wasn't that much more than us. Uh, Cause I think he got his management role when he, when, when but I was, I was kind of dying a little bit. But most of these people are like mums and parents and stuff. And I'm like, dude, you work in a minimum wage job for like over a decade. Whereas people in McDonald's, if you work the same amount of time in McDonald's, you'd be on a wicked wage. Like their workup system, no. they've got a pretty good. Is it? Isn't it? Because I, I heard that they had a better workup than us. I mean, maybe better, but not like wicked. Not like, oh, I worked there. I worked at McDonald's for 10 years. Now I'm making a, now I can afford to get my own home. Like, no. It's not. No, <laughs> that's not how that works, friend. But you get more than minimum wage, right? Well, if you yeah. work there for ten years. When I when I worked at McDonald's, I made I want to say like fifty to seventy cents above minimum wage. And I worked there for two years. Mm. That's 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 pretty 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 good. It, minimum wage <laughs> is like five dollars, man. It was, at that's the time it was minimum wage. It was six dollars and twenty cents, I think, per uh per hour. That's like our minimum wage, but in dollars. I think our one is six fifty. What's our? I'm gonna Google. I was just saying, uh, but you have to understand that like your pa- British pound is worth a, a bit more than than a single dollar. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah, but what's your living expense? I suppose. <laughs> are we really getting into yeah, why, what are we doing now? The podcast. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Blue? Have you done anything uh, before becoming or doing the doing the artist's work? You worked uh, at a, a movie theater. No, I um, I worked at General Motors and I built cars for two summers to pay for college. Holy shit, what? I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, it's factory work, so essentially you're doing the same shit every day, but it was easy, it was sometimes crazy, but the second year I had to do different jobs every day, so that was weird. I was gonna say, but like- then sometimes the jobs would just stand around like doing quality control. Like, oh yes, this has a bag that's supposed to be here. I've done my job. <laughs> that's so Dude, much that's... cooler than the shit we did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, Blockbusters is cool, right? I don't even want to say how much I got paid either. He'll be really upset. I was going to say, factory work is really well, well, typically above minimum wage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's usually really, uh, not really good, but well, it depends. Cause like if you work in a normal warehouse in this country, it's all right. But if you work in like say an Aldi warehouse, dude, you're getting like 14 quid an hour or something crazy. Oh, what's like Aldi? Double minimum. Aldi's like um, a supermarket chain that seemed to pay staff way, way more than minimum wage, but they're really cheap. They paid the, like the national living wage mm. rather than the That's minimum wage. really cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, Aldi and Little, they're very similar. I think they both pay like the living wage, but their warehouses pay more than the retail people, I think. Yeah, I want to say. Well, I get paid uh, $24 an hour. Oh my God! God. <laughs> <laughs> so there was also time and a half. Wow. God, Dude. that is a good wage. 
I, yeah, it was. That's like a copy of GTA every two hours. That, oh, yep. oh my god, no. The thing was, I worked at at and I thought I was doing good, and I was making like, what, 15 an hour? And you have to keep in mind, this was Canadian, but yeah, oh, it, was, it was good shit. Still, Canadian things are priced to Canadian dollars. Uh, that's what I'm tempted to do. Like, I'd, I'm so tempted just to do a, like, um, just take a gap year. I've, I just want to earn ton, as, as much money as I can in a year and just, just chill for another year. Like, a year on, year off. It's lucrative, but everyone always said that you sort of pay for it with your Freedom. own body. Yeah, I imagine, like, it's got to be super stressful work. It's just, you're working the same muscles over and over, days on straight, so eventually mm. it takes its toll. Yeah. I was going to guess, mean, the, like, not stress, but more of a grind. Yeah, the first maybe? year I was lifting 20-pound uh, batteries all day, and eventually that job had to be changed to use a robot, because a woman had some serious medical issues. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> yes. Like, oh, gosh, did they teach you how to lift? Do you even lift, uh, bro? Not really. I was going to say, I don't think that's usually something that they, that they kind of cover. They just kind of like, do, you just do they, your job however you have to do it. No, there, there was always a robot there. It was, just, it was significantly faster and you could get so much further ahead to oh. take like a break at some point. Really? If you lifted it. So the it was like, is, fuck They got to teach you how to lift it properly. I think, I want to say somewhere, most warehouses at least should, but I think they do here teach you how to lift a box and not pull your spine out. Which is mm -hmm. like, you know, lifting with your legs, uh, arch spine and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Like, years of doing it wrong will mess you up big time. I actually don't think they were 20. Maybe they were 10 to 15. It wasn't much, but apparently for old people it was. <laughs> Dude, I want to work in a factory now. No! Yeah. <laughs> no, you I was going to say, it's, everything's becoming automated, so that's probably not a good market to get into. <laughs> Plus, I mean, like, I can't... Yeah, given the choice, I don't think I would want to work in a factory. There's like, it's like that thing. One of my friends um, used to work in an oil rig because, like, of Texas, you, you have quite a few different like places you work for oil. It was like, yeah, the work was great. You know, just you'd always run the risk of losing a couple fingers. Yeah, yeah, you get danger pay. Yeah, I mean, like, well I have friends paid, that work pipelines also... and stuff like that, and when the work is there, it's good. Uh, but like, yeah. you know there's just always danger that's around you. It's like, oh yeah, you know, it's a really good living as long it's as you like, live. Um, electricians get paid a lot, but if you become like one of those electricians that does the power grid stuff, you know, like the big cables that will just fry you in an instant because yep. there's no like breaker. It's just the outside world and big cables to kill you. I think that one pays like, I think some people get up to like 100K a year if they do enough, you know. Oh my God. But you will die if you do something wrong. Yep. Like will. I've sparked a cable, but there's an RCD to save me. I don't know if there's an RCD on the real life, like big big boy cables. See, I'd have to imagine that there's gotta be something to stop you from dying. That would be, that'd be a little harsh if there was nothing to keep you from dying. And even in like big boy land. I mean, they've trained for like 10 plus years for that. I'd, have, I'd assume so. Hmm. Maybe that's the stopping point. I don't know. It could be. I'm, Maybe. Who do I know? I'm not an electrician. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, I'm just. Well, I'm not on about electrician like... stuff. I'm on about like danger pay stuff, like uh, railroad workers who work at night. I think. Why? Well, why one... is that a thing? You're like, you're, like making it. You don't want just... to do it during the day. You don't want to work then a you're railroad during all the, the day? trains. Yeah, you, then you're stopping all the lines. So you, they do it at night, just like how they do um, motorway maintenance at night, oh, at, like God. three in the morning. People. So I'm like driving home. I'm like, oh, guess I'm taking the back routes because the M6 is closed. I don't understand your reference. So the the M6 is a motorway. Yeah, uh, okay, highways. highway. Um, we do, they'll close a motorway, a highway at <laughs> like three in the morning till like six in the morning or till peak times. So maybe like midnight or like, yeah, 1 a.m. till 5 a.m. and just re-tarmac it for the morning. So it doesn't disrupt, I don't know, the world. That's See, like, here's the thing is I, I understand what you mean, but at the same time, in my experience, time of day doesn't seem to stop them. It, it really only does during like, if it's a busy road in particular, or if, I don't know. I think yeah. like if it's super hot out, they can't do work or some shit. I don't know. It could be. What are what the most dangerous yet most well-paid job is? Like danger to pay ratio. Bomb defusal. I don't even do know if you get paid, paid a whole lot, lot for that. Is I'm that trying to think now, like what would be the most dangerous job that you could do that you get paid for? 
I was See, gonna like, say it can't be something military. I don't think because military you kind of sign up for the danger. And I was um, gonna say military you get paid good because also you have to keep in mind that you don't um, you don't have to spend any of your money while you're deployed. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's another thing I was tempted to do is just do an army thing for like I think it's min four years here. Yeah, like once you sign up and just do that and just come out loaded and just rain on hookers with money. <laughs> I was not going to say that. I know a lot of folks that uh, have joined the military and they, you know, like use that to get their degree and they'll, they'll, uh, you know, save up a good amount of money. That way when they're out of the military, generally, you know, you end up getting married and you'll have a house and you're ready to start your life on like a really good note. But I don't know about making it rain on hookers. I guess people do that out of the military too. That's, that's probably a thing. I mean, that's a good way to have to go back to the military. (laughs) Well, yeah, if, if like, you know, if if the hookers' daddies pimps are after me because I made it rain too hard, then I'll just military away. Bon voyage. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the way you see the world is so interesting to me. The thing is, I knew someone who went to the army for like four years and came out with barely any money just because he spent most of it on like drinking. I'm really? Like, yeah. You waste four years of your life. I know my dad used to tell me stories about um, guys he knew of in the military who uh, had like, I mean, like it's it's one of the things that I joke about, but it's not like an actually a joke, but like they would develop drinking problems while it's they're in the military, you know, and like the way my dad usually brings it up is like my dad was in the military, like in the 60s and 70s. So he was like, yeah, back then everybody had a drink problem. But um, he would say like there was these different AA, AA meetings that they that you could go to that was in. I think he was in Thailand at the time. He says the military base would offer these different a- uh, like Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. And he had this one friend that he said he'd go to those meetings to get the free booze. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Essentially what this room was, it was a, it was a big room that had uh, a whole bunch of um, that had a whole bunch of alcohol bottles that you could drink from. And it used this kind of shock therapy idea uh, where there was a two way mirror. <laughs> And in front of like all of these different <laughs> bottles and you would just every time you tried to go for a drink, it would shock you. So my, my dad's friend would go oh, there. Literally shock therapy. Yeah. I think you meant like shock as in like, oh no, I'm startled. No, he said like his friend would go there and he would um he'd like see like that there's a two-way mirror there, he'd fix his hair in the mirror, everything, he'd get a drink, he'd pour himself a drink, and then like the band that they put on him or the bracelet or whatever would shock him and he'd like throw the drink over his shoulder and then he'd just pour himself another one <laughs> it was it was a weird the military is, is a weird place man <laughs> dude i hear nothing but crazy stories from the military from anyone who's who's like served or been in there some some guy i know got he, he was just we were in the car and he was like do you know you can get chlamydia from drinking someone's piss it's like, no, you what? can't. It's like, yeah, I can. Why? Because I've done it. What? <laughs> yeah, some guy had chlamydia and pissed in a, a pint glass. And he's like, days to drink it. And he was like, oh, I didn't want to do it, but everyone was chanting me to do it. So I had to do it and I got chlamydia. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and that's, it's just, that was, that was just a passive story. He's had, He's got like worse stories. They're stupid. They're utterly stupid. Th- but it seems to be like everyone I know who knows anyone in the military has these sort of secondhand stories of stupid things. That honestly astounds me that somebody went through with that. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I mean... <laughs> I don't know how that was ever going to end up in a good answer for him. Yeah. <laughs> I dare you to it drink does. it. Everybody <laughs> chants him to drink it, so he just does? There are zero positives <laughs> to the outcome. <laughs> He had to do it though. People were chanting him to do it. I <laughs> don't think that would get me to drink I, this. I, yeah, me neither. I don't think there's anything <laughs> short of like, I'll pay you $100,000 to drink this thing of piss that would have made me actually drink piss. <laughs> I'll be like, That's what? I even accounted for the chlamydia part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like, the, of all the worst outcomes to have from drinking someone's pee pee, <laughs> that getting an STD from it is probably the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually amazed. Is, is he alive still? Because that's yeah. amazing to me. He's 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 got. I I have mad respect for that man. Yeah, yeah. He's, he he's, did he's something to our country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Even the um the American soldiers that I know. Oh, really crazy. Crazy and weird. Oh yeah. Sometimes in good ways, sometimes in a you, you, bad ways. It, a uh, just, <laughs> how are you still living sort of way? <laughs> <laughs> no, just like you just want to slap him in the face and be like, "Come on, dude, wake up! This is reality now. You, you, you just, just don't, don't, don't do, don't do stupid things like that." Okay? <laughs> it's like um, he used to get drunk a lot and play Xbox Live. It was when I was like a little kid, <laughs> not a kid, like a teenager, playing Xbox Live. And there's this guy in his station in Germany, but he's American, uh, American military, and he yeah. used to just get wasted. But he had kids and his wife there with him. And with him? Like, so in Germany with him? Yeah, station with him. Okay, Not cool. station, like, in the station, but, like, probably living quarters. I don't know how it works. I think it's, like, how you lived in Japan. Japan? Yeah, yeah. yeah you do, just, like, still, like, uh, barracks that you could, that you're, you can rent, like, a, a house, like, as a family. You don't have to, like, stay literally in, yeah. in barracks, yeah. And then he was so wasted one night. And he goes, oh, we can not go to the toilet, whatever. And he doesn't come back. And we're playing so many games without him. And eventually this little, this, you just hear like <laughs> on the microphone. It's like, my dad fell asleep in the bathroom floor. <laughs> and we're like, oh, dude, what? Go wake him up. <laughs> make sure he doesn't drown in his own vomit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, come on, dude, you got a kiblet there. Don't, don't, don't do, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Jeez. There's um, one of the, uh, Creeps actually went over uh, to Germany to go see him uh, which, with a bunch of friends from England. I, I didn't go because I wasn't invited slash I was at uni, so I couldn't go. So good. And um, one of them, I don't think, has Creeps ever told you the story? So one of them gave him a wedgie so hard that it ripped his underwear off. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, he and hasn't he, told me that story, but it sounds but amazing. Because he was just holding this bit of underwear while the guy was laughing, because he was full on laughing in Creeps' face. And Creeps, I think Creeps is annoyed. While he was laughing with his mouth open, he just gets the bit where his ass has been and just goes Bleh, in his mouth. <laughs> Oh. And shoves it in there, and you just see him gagging, like, because uh, it's just got like <laughs> booty stank. <laughs> How do we get on this topic? I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I think we're talking about the the military, <laughs> military danger jobs. And then he got to so, uh, the stupid stories of the military. So Spike, Spike, how was your week? Oh, that's no. what you do here, right? Yeah, this is correct. <laughs> this is the podcast. Uh, my week was going okay, actually. I have uh, been working on a lot of different things. I got I got um, a lot of advice for how to do stuff for my YouTube live streams, which I think is going to be um, getting a whole lot better. Uh, the more I kind of talk to people that have been that are doing YouTube live streams, the more I'm actually really interested in being a part of it. So it, it's uh, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Plus, Sonic Mania came out. Ew. Don't you even you. Sonic <laughs> Mania is like, dude, Sonic Mania is like the first Sonic game in forever that is starting to get like nine out of ten for all of its different reviews. Yeah. Yep. No, it has hit loads of um like all the YouTubers that I watch who do gaming stuff have played it, like really adore it. Dude, it's Ugh. this right here is exactly the Sonic game that I've that I've been wanting for forever because it's it's just it's it's what Sonic Four should have been. It only took you years upon years of suffering to get you. Seriously, I mean, like they made Sonic the Hedgehog Four with the idea that like yeah, it's gonna be uh, another two D Sonic, but they just didn't do it right. It like the fact that this has become like an actually good two D Sonic is just uh, it's a, it's amazing to me because it's 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 good, man. Is yeah, Sonic they had 4? to have fans make it. Yeah, it's a fan made game. Well, it's yeah, it's made. They by hired fans. fan. Oh, they hired fans who used to make fan made games. Oh, really? Games. Yep. See, I didn't know that. I heard a couple of uh, jokes before. Where it was like uh, Sega be saying, "Oh yeah, well, if it's so easy to make a Sonic game, then you make it." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, these guys who made it though, they are like full on pro at making Sonic levels and stuff. They, they um, did you ever play Sonic CD on the mobile phone on Android mm. or? No, no, I didn't. Um, it's free on the Amazon Unlimited app but basically it's sonic cd but on your phone obviously and it's so true to the original like the physics is on point the feel and it plays i completed it actually I, i've completed a sonic game i just realized oh um neat. 
it was it plays really 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 well <laughs> on there and that was that was the creators of sonic mania i believe yep they did the port job on that one mm. and i mean they've added uh, a few new abilities which i'm quite shocked that you know these fans were allowed to add stuff to the sonic repertoire of moves but it all makes sense like that jump dash thingy the jump spin charge wait what you know when you hold down down and go Zzz! Yeah. You can jump in the air and go, and then when you land, you shoot forward. I didn't know that. Or something. So yeah, it's like a, it's a quicker way of charging it or something. Huh. I'm going to try that now. <laughs> well, actually, I think I turned on the uh, Sonic uh, Sonic CD powers as opposed to doing the, the Mania ones usually whenever I'm playing. Because it's, uh, I'm just used to doing the old things or like the Sonic, Sonic 3 abilities you have of making an instant shield so that you can't get hit by projectiles. I'm used to doing that. So now it's like, uh, something new. I'm resistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Blue? How's your um, week? Well, creeps, general, I, and sometimes Spike show up. Have been playing a lot of Splatoon. Oh yeah, too. And yeah, that's still fun. It's really fun, especially considering we start getting people doing Salmon Run, and <laughs> when you actually have a team coordinated, that goes a lot better than with randoms. <laughs> if only we Who had a coordinated known? team. Yeah, if only. You get like put in with uh, rando kids or whatever. <laughs> You never know. You just shout booyah at them and help when you need to. That's <laughs> all the communication you get. Oh, you can shout over here too. That's about it. I heard uh, if someone says booyah, you're legally required to say booyah back. Yes, it's a fact. Legally? You're a jerk if you do not. <laughs> yeah. It's a legally binding contract. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't do it, squid pops up and punches you in the face. <laughs> It's the Booyah Act of uh, 2017. Yeah. I was going to say, with, with Splatoon, the one thing I've learned to absolutely hate is squid bagging. What's that? <laughs> is that tea bagging with your squid? Oh yes. my gosh, when you like go in the, the paint and go bloop, bloop, bloop. Yes. That's, that's amazing. Exactly that also, I have not experienced that, like at all. I have many times. <laughs> you must be garbage. <laughs> Look, you've played with me, you know I'm garbage. <laughs> 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 Yeah, see, the only thing I can think is it'll be a kid that's squid bagging you. So you're getting beaten by a kid, Spike. Again. Wow. <laughs> I am never going to live that down. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, you are not. And then, like, aside from that, it's been some 14 stuff. And, yeah, just chilling a lot. See, how is 14 these days? Because I have yet to actually catch up. I really need to, to pay my subscription and, and get back into, uh, you know, finish, what do you call it? The Stormblood. Stormblood, yeah. And it's it's good. I like Omega, the current raid tier a lot. And our uh, free companies currently are, we, we usually do the first two floors of the week. We haven't really gotten into Linen 3 I, and 4 yet. I heard that uh, the free company finally put in a stripper pole down in the, in the basement, and I'm upset that nobody has told me about this because I've been oh. saying before that we should make it into a strip club, and then Jen was like, "No, we'll <laughs> never do that." And then now that I leave, all of a sudden it has a strip club in it. Oh, to be fair, we didn't decorate it. We had somebody in the food company who was very passionate about decorating, take care of it. Don't like nice. decorating. Hey, I'm in the free company. No, you're not. Oh, too bad you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> we had to get an external source. Was it actually like they're they're still in the they're still a part of the the actual free company? You didn't actually just bring somebody in to do it, right? No, no, no. It's um it's one of the people there who've been there for a while. Okay. I had them do my house first to see if they were any good, and it turned out fucking great. So really? we gave them the reins to the free company house. That's really cool. Can that just like rub off of the free company stuff if you give them reins? Not really. I, I mean, like... they could steal the furnishings, but there's not much there that I'd be upset about losing. Really? And Because if so, point, I, I have a lot that I've been wanting to steal from the free company house. You, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you said you didn't mind. And aside from that, still waiting on updates. Some of them are still terrible at the moment, which I really wish they would fix and... Yeah, on top of that, I guess I've also been playing some Poyo Poyo Tetris. Ah, oh, Poyo Poyo. I, I've been hearing so much about that. This is so it's close so to good. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I thought you'd, you'd bring that up. Dude, I love it. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, you did. You saw the tides. Yeah. Uh, a spoiler for anybody that's, that wants to get into Sonic Mania, but like, if you guys are familiar with the old Sega games, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, um, it, that's one of the bosses in this game, and oh, it's so amazing. I... 
I am mm-hmm. so like in love with the idea that like they they brought it back, and I hope it's an unlockable mode to just play the game again. Right, <laughs> that'd be cool. You figure it would be if they have the <clears throat> or they put the work to have it in there. Yeah, it's it's basically just like a full level of it, so I don't see why they wouldn't make that a the thing. Yeah. But I I've, so, I have not I've not unlocked a whole lot in the game, but I'm still in love mm-hmm. with the game. <laughs> I'll talk about it all day. This is another Sonic podcast. You guys ready for this? Do you guys know that Miles or Tails was actually supposed to be Sonic the Hedgehog? What? Did you actually not know that? <laughs> no, I actually didn't know that. That's amazing. What do you mean? So, so Matt, how was your week? <laughs> <laughs> My week is. Oh, what have I done this week? I don't even know. You worked on a Let's house. Let's see. Yeah, I've just been working on the house. I'm I'm flying to America soon, so currently that is my stress. I think it's like 12 days from now. Crap. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. It is 12 days. I'm trying to do as much of this the housework as I can. I'm basically trying to fix up a house to live. Um, but it's like, it's not just a, oh, I'll just repaint the walls. It's, oh, I'll just pull up all the carpet and all the flooring, and I'll rip out all the kitchen cabinets and kitchen furnishings and bathroom fittings, and I'll put it all back in. And I don't have enough time to put it back in before going to America so it's gonna be stuck like that for another month and then i'm gonna come back to it and try finish it oh dude okay so here's your first big mistake you actually did all that at the same time you didn't think to like oh well, i'll do one thing at a time you just started on everything no yeah shut up. On everything yeah tear it apart i'm i'm really like that's that's the thing though when i first started doing housework i didn't even know there's different kind of drills i didn't know the difference between like a, a driver and a normal drill and a hammer drill <laughs> And, you know, I've gone from that to buying my own tools and now borderline rewiring the whole house. In fact, I've pretty much rewired the entire upstairs lights by myself. It takes forever to chase cables up and down the loft because um, the loft hatch is so narrow that the ladder's pretty much backed up against it. So I have to like, s- like, I have to hump the ladder and kind of wiggle up to get in. And then I'm trying to find the cable and it's falling back down. So I have to go back down and put it back up with this bit of stick that I got. It's great. I love oh being God. alone all day. <laughs> I don't want to know about your sexual relationship. With <laughs> Dude, no, I, I've I have been thinking about um like <laughs> Don't start no, 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 like, I've been <laughs> thinking about. No, no, no. <laughs> I've been thinking about like if I ever got my elect- uh, an electrician's like um qualification, I wanna set up my own company called Over Elaborate o- Overly Elaborate Lights. Cause dude, the amount of lights I put in the house is insane. It can I can land a jet in there. I can just land a plane. It's I, it's lighting up the whole street. I saw what you did with the living room of the house it looks great but i mean dude yeah i can totally tell what you mean that 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 is an obscene amount of lights that you put in that room the thing is i i don't want to buy like some random 30 quid ikea lamp when i can have like a set of dimmers do la- the lamp the low lighting for me because the i it's like uh, oh i just bought this new iPhone 7 Plus, which some, they paid some guy like hundreds of thousands of, or this team hundreds of thousands of pounds to design this phone to feel this way in my hand. I'll just slap on the four pound Chinese made phone case. Yeah, Chinese? why not? Um, it's made in China. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It's just made in China. It's, and it's a four yeah, pound a case. Racist thing? Yes. <laughs> but no, dude, like it's, it's that whole thing of like, I, it, the house is worth like, s- Houses are really expensive, basically. I want the house to light the thing. I don't want some 30 quid lamp. I'd rather have like a surrounding down light dim- on dimmers. No, I feel you. Yeah, but, but sometimes you just want a bright light, but not the whole room to be bright. That's where the dimmers come in. And it's it's um, infrared remote control, so I can have different- <laughs> Oh my God, you're ridiculous. Dude, the, the dimmer switches cost like 50 quid alone. It's crazy, but it's awesome. <laughs> Because oh I'm God. trying to save as much money as I can, so I'm trying to do it all myself, which is also killing me because I don't know what I'm doing every time. So I'm just learning as I go. It's great. Isn't this also why you nearly killed yourself with uh, electricity? Uh, yeah. Only once. It didn't almost kill myself, okay? Those tools can withstand a thousand volts. Uh, 240 is not going to make a dent. It okay? sounded like it did make a pretty big dent, actually, the way that you put it. <laughs> <laughs> It blinded me a little bit. Okay, it's really bright. Li- it's a really bright light on a really dim day, because I I've not had the power switch on in so long, so I don't have the lights on. It's Shut up. <laughs> This podcast is going places this week. I know. That I, I don't know what we're even discussing at this point. We're discussing how to become an electrician, which is the second time it's come up within the single episode of the podcast, How to Become an Electrician. <laughs> <laughs> a 
apparently in Matt's case, you just watch YouTube videos, I assume. Dude, some guy built a house watching YouTube tutorials. Okay. I think I could put a light fitting on the, the, the ceiling. I would say, I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of the stuff I've been doing inside of my house has also been watching YouTube tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> the day and age we live in is amazing, okay? <laughs> oh. Can't argue that, I guess. Just keep your fingers, people. <laughs> Look, fingers also were very overrated if you think about it. Yeah, Ezio only has like nine of them. Who? Yeah. He's the assassin from Assassin's Creed. Never played it. You never played Assassin's Creed? It was garbage. Creed. See, that's what I heard. Yeah. What? It's great. Well, the f that's I really nice. liked the first one. And the second one was I, right, and then I just stopped playing them because they were just becoming like Call of Duty just every year. Every year they just put on a new one that's the exact same game. They mm -hmm. just changed the well, name Black, about it. Uh, is it Black Flags? That's the one I want yes. to play. That one, oh, never mind. I played that one. I played it and I, I before I even uh, got a chance to, uh, like they, in the story, before they got a chance to tell me about like, oh, these are legendary ships. I had already defeated all of them. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I really love naval combat in games. So like, <laughs> when it was like, yeah, you could be a pirate and have a pirate ship. I was like, yes, that's all I did in the game. See, I bought it like two years ago, and I've never touched it. I should really stream it. Oh, you should. It's I great. Should, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. It'll just be me just sailing all day and not talking. Yeah. I'm like just sailing forward. No, dude, just get get used to uh, singing sea shanties with your uh, with your with your chat. I'm telling you right yeah. now, a million dollar idea. Okay, just like have them find sea shanties and you'll sing along with them as long as they they play them as you're sailing. I'm taking that idea. It's my idea now. Yeah. I thought, I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> it was but so no, smart. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful game, actually. Like, what was that one Black Wave that I that we had got before that was like a naval combat oh, game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that again. Yeah, I know Blue wasn't able to play it because it, it was that it's got that seasickness bad in the game where it's just like. Yeah, yeah. I played it for less than 10 minutes and felt like I was going to vomit. Yeah. And had to pass out the whole night. <laughs> oh, God. Was it really that long? Like, yeah, was... you were out for the night. Jeez. And like it's it's a really fun game whenever you've got somebody who knows how to be a good captain. It's not me. Mm -hmm. But like anyone else. <laughs> yeah. But you have to play with randos too, which scares me. Cause like I just the, the, you can't hear them, but they're just looking at you and they're just hitting your character because you're not doing something. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm trying to repair the ship. Get away. Uh, uh, you guys improved it. Say so just turn on turn your mic on, dude. Yeah, I could do. You talking to randoms? Yeah. I there was this one British kid rando. that was like a super amazing uh captain the entire time. Ooh. And he called me lad afterward, which made me happy because he was British. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's all the time we have to th this week. Um, <laughs> thanks for listening. Um, um, be, be sure to check us out on YouTube at Dungeon Runners Podcast. Um, check us out live. We usually stream on Tuesdays if we're all around. But I was going to say, we've been really bad this about is that Wednesday. lately. Yeah. It's been Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> lately. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we can, but it's on the, the, the dungeon. It's twitch.tv forward slash dungeon runners. And you can email us at dungeon runners podcast at gmail.com. And you can send us any hypotheticals or questions there. Also, check us out on iTunes and Android. Ooh. And SoundCloud? Android? And SoundCloud. Well, yeah, we're on Google Play. Google Play. It's Android. Yeah. Android. -ish. Android. Matt smells. <laughs> Please just end the podcast with that. Matt smells. <laughs>